All right, uh, let's move on to our next one. Um, speaking of trans, no, there was no transition to the penguin. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so this is uh, well, a single episode has been released so far. Um, yeah. And I think the thing I heard from a lot of people was basically the sentiment of, why the hell would you make a TV show about the penguin from the Matt Reeves Batman movie? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, I, I think uh, Colin Farrell's performance might have had something to do with it. Right. I, I honestly, um, I was of the opinion that while he was fine in the Batman, uh, yeah. his he could have been so easily cut that I suspect that this uh, TV show was in the cards and was the reason he was in that movie. Probably, yeah. Yeah, because his, his whole, if I remember the movie right, his whole subplot's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like misdirection. Like it's, it doesn't yeah. really affect the main, main plot of the movie. Right. He, he is a red herring and there's a car chase scene that doesn't really add much to the plot. So that, yeah. that, that, I remember that from our review of the movie where it's like, that was a, you know, it was a fine car chase scene, but it doesn't really add much to the movie. Uh, yeah, it, it really didn't. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, um, uh, so yeah, we we gave the penguin a watch, and um, I, I think our, our opinions are, are slightly different. I thought it was all right. Um, it was you know I, I I thought it was a little slow in a lot of parts, uh, a little too talky for my for my taste. Well, anybody who's read my books knows I am not opposed to talking as long as the talking is. Uh, able to make some tension that's true yeah but but, but uh, i think i would be with you on this one uh so basic premise of this one is that it happens immediately after the last batman movie where the riddler had blown up the sea wall and flooded a big chunk of the downtown yeah and they're they're dealing with the after effects of it and uh what i also forgot too was that uh, carmine falcone uh was killed uh, right, and you have his uh, useless drug-addled son taking over. Right, yeah, and uh, <clears throat> so uh, so Oz uh, is kind of uh, left to try to, you know, basically uh, make make sense of everything, and he's trying to uh, work his way through the uh, through the, the through the family, you know, organization, and. Um, and he he's got his way of doing that by uh, you know he goes back to the uh, to the iceberg lounge and uh, goes into Falcone's uh, vault where he's got dirt on like everybody. Right. It's like well, old man's uh, out of business, so time to uh, swoop in and get some dirt. Yes. And then the useless layabout son shows up. Yeah, and uh, they have a little uh, talk, and uh, the layabout son uh, basically mocks uh, Oz, and Oz doesn't like it, and he just shoots him. Yep, and he's like, ah, oh, crap, what did I do? <laughs> yeah. Because, <laughs> um, so I, I think that I can agree with you that it's a little bit slow, and it, I think your enjoyment of this is how much um, weight do you give to um colin farrell's performance as the penguin yeah um and and, and i don't uh, mind his performance i mean it, it's definitely a um it's definitely a different take on the character because i mean i know in a lot of the other uh adaptations he does come across as being kind of goofy um you know he's you know where whether it's the uh the Tim Burton one with Danny DeVito playing him, uh, right. yeah, or um, or even or the Batman the animated series version, which borrowed from Batman Returns. Yeah. Right. I, I mean, the, the Penguin in most, I think what this version is very different about is that most versions of the Penguin have some sort of like effeteness to him, because in a lot of versions he is like a a man of some means who has been humbled and forced to try to rebuild the family fortune with crime. Right. Yeah. Um, and I, I know in some continuities, uh, 
they were actually uh, the Cobblepots were rivals of the Waynes, and the Waynes were like hmm. responsible for the downfall of their family. Okay, I don't I don't think I've seen a version that did that, but that that tracks. That gives the yeah. Penguins some reason to hate Bruce Wayne. Yeah, yeah. Although I think in this this version, it didn't seem that way because no. they kind of show him as being as coming from like very much a middle class uh, family. Or even, or even like lower middle class, just based on the quality of the house. Right. Yeah. And and of course, there's a bit of an age gap between. Well, I don't know. Maybe he maybe he had to run in with Thomas Wayne because the the uh, Thomas and Martha Wayne in this continuity were not good people. <laughs> if you saw no. the Batman. No, yeah. as, as I recall, I think they were like okay people, but they were just like very negligent. Yeah. Yeah. Is the best way to put it. But um, so, so uh, this penguin is is also apparently very reminiscent of the Gotham TV show they used to run on Fox. Never mm -hmm. saw it, never cared to see it. Um, I so I've heard yeah. people criticize this show for being too similar. So you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, your your mileage may vary, but um, what what I thought was made this version of uh, the penguin very interesting is that. I'm going to, you know what? We're not monetized anyway. Such a weasley little shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, he is a compulsive liar, but he's actually good at uh, weaving you, like, weaving his lies into the conversation to manipulate people. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. He does that with everybody. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like, when he was talking with the Falcone son that he kills, uh, he. He basically, uh, the, the Falcon says, here's the thing, Penguin. We knew you were skimming off the top, but you were smart about it. You didn't do it enough that we'd care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, and, that, and that's the Penguin in general. Is just he's very much like he flies under the radar. He's that guy who, uh, you know, people just, he can get things done. You, you don't necessarily care how he gets them done. You don't like him. You don't respect him. But, you know, again, things get done. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, and he's kind of easy to overlook because fat, ugly guy with a deformity on his foot that makes him look like he's waddling when he walks around. So it's just, uh, yeah. he, he's the type of guy who's easy to overlook. Um, but he also, as we saw you know, with him spontaneously killing the layabout son, uh, prone to bursts of intense anger. Yes. <laughs> Um, and so it, it, this, this whole series is him dealing with the fallout of the of that rash choice, because you know, you know he has to figure out how to not get caught having done it. He has to figure out um, what he wants to do in the uh, in the current mob dynamics of Gotham. Uh, he's told that uh, they're shutting down his drops operation, which uh, drops is an eye drop based drug that they had in the movie. Yeah, and so yeah, he doesn't take well to that. So he's trying to stir shit up, right? Yeah, and um, and uh, Ar Ar Arcus uh, mentions the uh, the the daughter uh, Falcone Falcone's daughter uh, who uh, um, I can't what was her name Sophia? Yeah, Sophia sounds right. So yeah, Sophia, and uh, uh, she was recently uh, released from Arkham. And uh, so, she, and she's, and you could tell, like, when you're watching the scenes with with him and her, like, they're they're like, she's not all there, <laughs> not all there, and uh, she also uh, is aware that he is a lying sack of crap. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so, it's basically the penguin has lobbed a grenade into the Gotham underworld, and now he just has to figure out how to not get blown up by it right yeah and um well, one of the other aspects we forgot to mention was uh the, uh the the kid that he basically uh, uh kidnaps and and forces yes. to to work for him um because right. uh yeah yeah er, er, early on a, a gang of of uh of local youths as uh, yes. uncle Vinny would say are trying to steal his hubcaps and uh he ends up chasing down one of them and presses him into duty, helping him deal with the body. Right. Yeah. And um, 
and f for uh, for whatever reason, he kind of uh, takes mercy on him and just like, all right, I want you to do stuff for me. Basically, makes him run errands and you know, yeah, yeah. And, and and so uh, there's a couple ways you could interpret it. Uh, the way I took it was that um, so Penguin was talking about how the way he gets by is he makes himself seem small around big people so that they overlook him. And I almost felt like uh, when he was dealing with the kid, the kid made him feel big because he kind of had the kid at his mercy. Yeah. But at the same time, he was also like coming up from nothing. So he, uh, he, he might have actually had a moment of human sympathy and uh, decided to spare the kid. Yeah. And, and it, 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 it could very well be a mixture of both. Yeah. Cause I think that, I think the strength of this is that the, uh, Colin Farrell's Penguin is just amusing to watch. Not amusing, amusing, captivating to watch on its own. Yeah. Yeah, because the entire time you're trying to figure out, like, well, what's, you know, what's his goal here? What's he, you know, it, it, it does he, you know, like, like the scene in, um, you know, like when he goes to the prison to uh, visit uh, Sal Maroney, who's played by uh, Clancy Brown. It was like, well, does he, you know, does he really want like want to work with him, or is he just screwing with him? You know, right? right. Is he just trying to uh, take some heat off of him by starting a mob war? Yeah. So it's just very. Uh, he keeps you guessing. You don't know everything about him. It's a well done performance with a lot of minute facial expression work. He sells the character, and it, it's. You know, it, it, he's worth all the pancake makeup and fat suits and everything else they have to put on him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to make a handsome Irish man look like an Italian gangster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, so I, I think I'm going to continue watching this. Uh, apparently, we lucked into it being shown early last week. It's going to be a Sunday show going forward. Oh, okay. I, I think that the, apparently they put it out early to coincide with Batman Day. Oh, okay. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. And and yeah, Arco says partly mercy, part how he wanted to be remembered. That's right. He wanted to he told the story about the old mobster who everybody admired and threw a parade for. Right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, I can't. And now the question is, did he actually does he actually care or does he just care about the prestige? Like that's that he's a complex character and I actually appreciate that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, the other complaint I've seen people level at this is that it's like a Walmart version of The Sopranos. Um, I will admit I have not bothered to watch The Sopranos, so uh, I may yeah. at some point, but uh, so maybe I'm just the silly nerd who is, needs it to be based on a comic book to enjoy it. I don't know. Yeah, but maybe. I'm, yeah. <laughs> but I've enjoyed myself so far. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I I might watch the next episode just out of curiosity. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know that this will just become a regular feature. Uh, if I keep with it, uh, maybe I'll do like a season analysis. If yeah. it drops off and I hate it, maybe I'll talk about why. Uh, why episode four of the Penguin is the worst thing ever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but. Um,